All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is possibly the last in my series of Song of Ice and Fire miniatures for a while. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, very quickly how to get started on a House Umber Soldier. And beyond that, in the future, uh, there's more models I want to pick up that I'd like to do tutorials on, such as the Pyromancers or the Warrior's Sons. Those would be fun to go over, but uh, I have to be responsible. I am working on my master's thesis right now and I need to finish it. It's growing out of control. If any of you have worked on anything like that, you know how that can be. I was trying to aim for small and I just keep getting larger and larger and larger. So um, I gotta finish that project so I can say, yes, I'm a master and I can go get a job working at a museum or whatever. But until that happens, that's probably going to be it for this for a little while, but uh, I will come back and film some more if there is the demand to see that kind of stuff. Also, before we get started, real quick, I have seen on the forums people talking about the old Dark Sword miniature uh, pewter figures for Song of Ice and Fire and how compatible they are with the game. So, um, I was very unhappy with the bronze miniature that came with this game. Ron is described in the book, he's lithe like a cat, he wears mail, uh, he has long dark hair. This, what came with the game, he was balding, he was very thick and chunky. I mean, I like the idea of Brigandine and Gambison, but it just didn't fit. Now, I knew what the sculpt looked like from Dark Horse Miniatures. Now, other than having a shield, which Bronn was notorious for not using, I thought this was a fairly good fit. Let me try and get that guy in focus. There we go. So, um, yeah, he's wearing just a male Bernie, which is cool. He's got a, you know, a mercenary sword, nothing fancy. He's wearing... You know, that looks more like a early 14th century bassinet, but... It's got the nasal guard on it, so it's pretty cool. The problem is with scale. I've seen people say, oh no, the scale works, they're just a little thinner, but they're about the right size. Okay, so when we compare this Umber Champion, I mean, Umber Champions are kind of big, right? But he's not that large. And now if I lower him down, I mean, he's on a big base. So even on this big base, He's only just standing as tall, and he looks like he might be 10 in comparison. So it's not just that he's thinner, he's a lot smaller. And then it really starts figuring in when you take something like the Hound. I mean, the Hound's a tall guy. I don't think Bronze short, but Bronze absolutely tiny when compared. So went ahead and took some parts from Bron, like his hands his shield, his feet, and I sculpted a new one. Oh, focus. There we go. So this is the new Bron. So I'm a little happier with that guy. And he's trying to channel this just a little bit. Definitely not as fine of a sculpt as what they were able to do, but that is the best of my ability. All right, so as I was saying, we're going to look at House Umber. Now, most of House Umber is done up using the exact same techniques we've already gone over. So the furs, they can be done with a nice burnt umber, they can be done with a dark sienna, they can be done in a washed out black, you can highlight them up to white, that's your choice. The metals, we've already talked about how to, how to do on the Starks. I do them a little brighter than I do on House Bolton, but they're still kind of dingy and look like they haven't been polished much. Same thing for the axe head. So the big question is, how do we paint the colors? So if we're going to go by canon, House Umber is, their sigil is the giant with the broken chains on red. So I've been painting these guys up in red, but I don't want them to look like Lannisters. So in my mind, where the Lannisters are this very vibrant crimson color, I want them to be a more washed out duller red. 
So to do that, we're going to take the same ink we've been using, the Natful Crimson, and we're going to dull it down. And to dull it down, if I put white into it, it is just going to turn pink. Which isn't necessarily bad, but to uh, give it a little bit more dulling, I'm going to be instead mixing it in with a little bit of Rin Flesh by P3. So the Rin Flesh is still a very pink color, but it's got just enough of the yellow and green to make it look like flesh in it that it will knock the red down a touch. So we're going to take the ink, the paint, and some matte medium. So we're going to spread out some matte medium here. And we're going to grab up some ink. And we're going to make our glaze. And it's similar to what we do with the lancers, but now we're going to go ahead and grab up this flesh tone. Flesh tone goes a long way, so now we're going to brighten this back up. All right, so right about there. Go ahead and pull this up. So you can see we have done quite a bit to dull down the red from the bright crimson to a slightly dulled down, softer red. So we're gonna go ahead and clean off our brush just a little bit. Pull off my, so we don't want an overloaded brush when we go to paint. And so on this guy, how are we gonna paint him? I think I am going to just tint up the cloak as gray, and he's wearing a stark gray cloak. So let's go ahead and make this shirt area be the red so we know that he's an umber. So he has some house pride. So yeah, we're just going to come in here with this, which is all glazy. That bit of pink that we added to it from the flesh is going to make it a little more translucent rather than transparent, but with the matte medium and the ink already being transparent, our shading should still pop through. And I think we're going to do a maximum of two coats on this guy, and he's going to be ready. Hence making this a shorter video. Let's cut in here. Make sure I'm on the camera. So I'm sure anybody watching this has most likely been watching Game of Thrones and if you're watching this later, you may not know where we are in the final season, but uh, on Sunday they just aired episode four, and it was horrible. Daenerys makes the weirdest decisions ever, and she's acting like she's mad. And also, if you look on the internet, they have... Uh, HBO just went in and digitally removed the Starbucks coffee cup that was left on the table during the feast. Now, it's almost like with this show, they, just, they knew it was ending, they had their money, and they said they were going to take their time, and then they just, oh yeah, we got to get to work, let's make this. We'll make it real quick. Nobody cares. We've already got our money, everybody loves this show, we can do what we want. I really hope if and when George Martin finishes this series, that we get something a little better than what the TV show is giving. But I still think that final battle that we saw is going to be in the Winds of Winter. Dreams of Spring, um, according to Martin, I think that's gonna be very much scouring of the shower, uh, Shire type storyline where we are seeing the aftermath of these wars in Westeros and how life is after and how things changed. So that'll be cool. I look forward to seeing that. All right, so there we go. We have his colored vest there. And we can see some of the shadows poking through. And at this point, you can say, I'm done, I'm going to stop. 
but uh, when have I ever stopped at just this level while I'm doing a video? Because some of you want to press forward. So to press forward, we've got that lighter shade we mixed up. So we're going to take some of that, and we're going to do some highlights real quick. All right, so I'm taking that color, and I just want to go ahead and hit the areas where this light would be gathering. I'm going to add a little bit more of the pink or the flesh tone to this just to give it a better opacity. And this will continue to sell the idea that the stuff's been out in the weather for a while, the harsh climbs of the north, it sees a lot of snow, a lot of rain, and it does not hold its color. And they do not have the money on hand to be handing these people new uniforms just because their colors faded. I mean, heck, his shirt's all ripped. They're not going to be issuing anything new. So he's been wearing this for a while, and it is starting to fade. And we got jump the contrast right there. And now we're just going to come in here and start feathering that in. Just dragging it into where I want that highlight. There we go. I just feathered in those highlights, brightened it up just a little bit. Let me, uh, I always like highlighting at the bottom, even though that's going to be in shadow. Gives you a little visual contrast. It was like a little bit of gradient on my colors. And he's the boss of the unit, so uh, we can spend a little bit more time on him. All right. There we go. We blended that in. Try to get him closer up here. Try to get him into focus. All right, so that is it for these guys. Now, on some of the models, you're going to notice that once you have painted them, that he doesn't have much red. Maybe you're going to do more red. Or maybe there are spots you really want to push some of the shadows because they're not pushing the way you want it to. If you are in that situation, let me see if I can find it. Um, I would suggest the... Uh, Shade paints from Citadel, or the shade washes or glazes, or whatever you want to call them, the shades and the violet shade. You can make your own with purple ink. You could just add a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and start darkening that up. So if you have a dark indigo or purple, that works. But this is already a very dark purple. It's meant to shade. So, and it does a Pretty good job. So you don't want a full brush load of it because we're not looking for that stark of an effect. Yeah, bad puns. I did not mean it. All right, so we're going to take this. We put it on the wet palette so it's thinned down just a bit. And you can just go ahead and start punching those shadows. <laughs> Drop a little bit of color in. Uh, put it around the belt to make that crease where the leather and the cloth meet separate a little bit more. We're gonna go under there. That's a pretty good cut. So I'm gonna go with almost straight glaze right here. Catching light, and then right there it's not. Make that highlight pop just a little bit more. All right, and let's see. 
Again, it's subtlety with a model like this doing that. But uh, on your leaders, you might want to just keep pushing it. I don't know how far you want to take your miniatures. But we got that right there. So that is, I'm, all the other techniques have been covered. So um, if I have time to keep working on this guy today, I will film a little bit more, splice it in of him finished. And then after that, uh, I guess I will link over to my Facebook page where I post this stuff and have a public photo gallery of all these models finished up. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, before I post this, I guess there will be another video showing this guy completed, so stay tuned. All right, it's been about 45 minutes and he is all finished up. Let's see if we can get him in focus. There we go. Now I might go in there and hit those fleshes. They're kind of dull. Although I do like sort of the look of it. But uh, yeah, he just needs the actual basing. I'll be doing all my models at the same time with a short static grass and uh, static grass clumps, rocks, etc. I want everything to look green and verdant. That's mostly where I'm going to have my battlefield set up is on green. But yeah, we just, uh, metals are as described for the Starks. They're done in gunmetal of your choice, darker metal. And then I went over it with, uh, this time I used the, uh, oh, the burnt umber ink, just straight from uh, the ink pot. Coated that, let that dry. Um, I did one solid coat of the Nuln oil, let that dry, and then I reshaded. And then I hit everything with a dry brush of a mix of gunmetal and silver. And did a little bit more silver on the blades of the weapons. And then we've got uh, black ink and um, Oh, what is it? The uh, sepia ink as the fur. And then just a little bit of brown on the edge of the white cloak. Because it looks a little torn, so I'm just sure it's not clean. And then we did gray for the inner clothes. Everything else is just some brown inks. A little bit of gold here and there to accent. But yeah, there you go. And yeah, he was about 45 minutes to paint, so uh, if you're doing a whole squad, it doesn't take very long. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, hopefully I will be back sooner rather than later, and we'll look at painting some of the newer models that are coming out. Or, if I can talk my wife into it, we'll be starting a new faction. Alright, see you guys later.